Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Chrissy Sawyer here. Okay. Today I'm going to do something I haven't done before. Um, so I'm recovering. Thank you for your well wishes. Uh, bless you. That was a really tough two weeks for me. Very, very poorly. Um, I'm coming back. But part of that poorliness was a huge activation. Um, and something erupting in the collective that I'm now seeing coming through as evidence of what I've been sensing. And yes, it's linked to the party that's going on in Aquarius right now. And you know, I go deep. And so I might talk about things on this video that are triggering. Um, if you know you can't hold yourself in process, just click off. It will circulate back round when you're ready and you'll find it. Okay, and trust that. If you can hold yourself and you want to do some shadow work, I don't know where it's going to go today, but I want to talk to something that I don't, uh, that I haven't brought before, but it's, but it's, but it's here and it's, it's, it's hidden so deep in the psyche, but it's erupting. So I'm going to go to my notes. Um, so we now have uh, all planets in Aquarius. I think Venus follows on in two days, two, three days. Uh, Mars is Mars has just gone into Aquarius to conjunct with Pluto. And I find it interesting that Mars has gone into conjunct with Pluto on the same day as we are now in a huge geomagnetic storm. Um, hmm. So we have Mercury, Mars, and Venus, personal planets. Uh, Venus, uh, sorry, Mercury is out of conjunction, but still in Aquarius. But Mars and Venus are now conjunct Pluto, even though Venus hasn't made it into Aquarius yet. And so if we think Mars rules Aries, the North Node, Venus rules Libra, the South Node, we have a paradigm shift in relationship to sexuality. Okay, so I'm just going to read through these words and then I can get my notes off my desk. Words. So I've been dancing with, well, I always dance with Pluto. Um, I can't escape Pluto. It sits at the seat of the work that I do with people and their wounding. So words, disruption, breaking out of a cocoon. Sexual subduction is what I was given this morning. Seduction, the power of arousal through the control and manipulation of the primal sensory perception. Politics, religion, manipulation, sorcery, guilt, blame, seduction, attachment, coercion, patriarchy, animus, succubus, incubus, ritual, Repression, sin, shame, devotee, intensity, sexuality, jealousy, abuse, and power. And then ever so mysteriously, this quote appears. <laughs> this quote is from D.H. Lawrence. Sometimes snakes can't slough. They can't burst their old skin. Then they go sick and die inside the old skin and nobody ever sees their new pattern. It needs a real desperate recklessness to burst your old skin. You simply don't care what happens to you if you rip yourself in two so long as you get out.
So I could talk to the suppression of sexuality, but you know that song and I won't be bringing you anything new. Um, last night I was working with my team and I was taken right back to sexuality, pre-Christian sexuality, and then even further back to explore what it is and the words I get with, um, mm, yeah, come to the question first. My question was, what is healthy expression of sexuality? Um, because it's been so whitewashed and Christianized and shamed and made dirty that the sexual act has become some bloody contorted Hollywood, vapid, You know, and it makes me ask the question of where sexuality could play out as the nuclear fusion to birth universes. That's how powerful, powerfully expressed sexuality. Yeah, and, and here the word healthy goes out of the equation. I'm not sure healthy and sexuality go together because sexuality is such a broad spectrum of experience and it's... And it's about where you dare to go without shame. Because the moral injury attached to sexuality has made it totally hijackable. And so what I want to do is to bring you a tarot deck that I've had for, I don't know, probably seven months. And I found this tarot deck and I went on their website and I looked at the tarot deck. Okay, there's a lovely metaphor in here. And from the cards I saw, I thought this artwork is just beautiful. The cards arrived <laughs> and they are erotic beyond belief. Website didn't show that because the website couldn't show that or because the website whitewashed a deeply erotic sexual tarot deck. And this tarot deck's been sitting, just sitting on the shelf. Okay. And this is the deck. Now, because it's YouTube, I will honor its code and there may be cards I can't show you, but that I can talk into. And what I'm guiding you what I'm going to guide you to do, correctly, I'm not even sure of these. Interesting. So I'm just all I'm doing is bending the cards because they haven't been used that much, and the Queen of Swords pops out. Right. Notice the way I'm talking about this. I don't feel anything, and. Part of the hijacking is where the psyche taps into rage, revulsion, anger. Um, and, if, and if I speak to the client work that's happening at the moment, it's so I work with uh, childhood trauma in all its forms. And so for uh, around 20 years, I've been working with sexual abuse. And in 2017, 18, it started, it started deepening horrific sexual abuse. And then in 2022, it turned into ritual abuse. Um, I'm blown away at the depth of the work that comes through when I'm working with clients. Um, it's such a beautiful space, so strong. So my Queen of Swords, quite well trained. I don't get lost in the drama. Um, but it's the drama that will reveal at a cellular level the story that creates the nuclear fusion in order to transmute these abusive energies that have been on the planet, you know. And somebody even sent me a message about 
the Draco Illuminati and I thought, well, that's coming in. That's just whether I believe in that or not, immaterial, that that arrived, <laughs> that that arrived when I'm journeying with this deeply repressed, made sinful expression of sexuality. I mean, we're talking the sacral chakra, and that is the center of birth. That's, that's our Africa. <laughs> that is the center, the womb. And hijack the womb, and you control every expression of sexuality. So that the only way to express what we know of as dirty sexuality is through pornography. But what is pornography? Uh, where are the parameters for pornography? And so I sense a real paradigm shift here in our relationship, in the relationship between power and sexuality, which is being held by Mars and Venus. Beautiful, thank you. Oh, I like the back of these cards. Okay. What is changing? Uh, do you know what, scratch the questions. Thank you. That's how it's going to happen. Just messages. Yeah. There's a really happy energy has just come into my heart with the message, we're so happy you're doing this. I'm not going to linger there because it may bring tears. Oh, my God. I need a drink. Okay. Let's sit the Queen of Swords there so she can hold space with the serpent, all right? First card out, Seven of Swords. This is the temptation. Wow. Stop the snake from bursting its skin by giving it an emerald. And the crow is the journey of between worlds, which whispers to off-world energies coming in to take the soul essence, to steal and thieve innocence and purity from the child. For the promise of riches. These two cards speak to actually this speaks to soul disconnection, the inability to make a choice. This is volition, sacral, creating from the void, deeply feminine. But what is taken from, the, from innocence turns that upside down so that that energy is easier to lead, to lead by the nose, 
on the promise of something, on the promise of something, a certain kind of fake righteousness, if you like, and I notice the underlying energy is the priest. And yes, I have worked with church sexual wounding as well. Yeah, this is it. This is it. It's coming. <laughs> this is it. The star. This is Aquarius. Holy shit balls. This is amazing. Get this energy off the planet. That's a game changer. Oh, oh my legs are fizzing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how this was going to go. Oh, look at this. This is literally the healing of the dark wound on this planet. So we have the king of king and queen of swords, followed by the devil, preceded by the star and the hierophant. This is the reworking. Um, mm. The next card is the Ace of Discs. Okay. And I can't show you the image. Um, it has on it a bull's head. So Discs speaks to resource, speaks to Taurus. That's the Uranus square to Pluto. Transformation and revolution are what's happening between on that angle. So Uranus is going to give, uh, you know, there have been uh, people suddenly remembering, remembering, this is the message of Zeta, remember who you are, but remember what happened to you. Remembering age-old trauma, like they're going back a long way. And these people have been doing their shadow work for a wee while now, and they keep going back, we go back, and we go back. And... They're back a long way, and there's this, oh, holy, holy moment where this memory erupts out of the blue. That's Uranus working to free the psyche, to purify the psyche. It's very, very powerful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, and we must hold fast to, as these new blueprints come in, we must hold fast because... As this cleansing and purification, certainly for the whole of February, comes in, so too will it be hijacked by some and contorted and distorted and driven underground. Yeah, the Ace of Discs has both sets of genitalia, a labyrinth, uh, eagle wings, snake, and um an ox or a bull it's very beautiful i really recommend these if you want to do um if you want to rebirth your erotica freely okay freely to uplift it give it permission to exist in the world it's a beautiful deck um i also stumbled i was researching this morning um and I stumbled across a deck I cannot find, and it's called the Succubus Tarot. Um, and it just lo it looked really powerful, but I can't find it anywhere. So I don't know where that comes from. Okay, any other messages? I need to go in a minute.
Did I accidentally put that back in the deck because it's come out again? <laughs> okay. So, star. Ah, okay. <clears throat> It is a secret wish of mine. It is a naughty wish. <laughs> I hope I get to see before I die the fall of the Vatican. I would love that. Because that's when real new energy can pour in. That's where the uh, way showers can really pull the light in. So that energy can never rise again. Page of Wands. So I get the words walking tentatively, still kind of a little bit in the shadow of passion, in the shadow of sexuality, but slowly coming forward, Paige is practicing harnessing fire, practicing how to harness fire, creation, passion. Like a young magician energy. Yeah, it's like a young magician energy. It has Mary. There's a whole story about the Magdalene energy coming in, about the shaming of the Magdalene line. And I'm taken to Royston in England. And I'm taken to the Templars. But it's taking back your magician's table. It's taking back your tools. This is the take back. This is the paradigm shift. Is is to use your sexual force as nuclear confusion to be dangerously powerful in the world. Everything that is suppressed walk towards it. <laughs> And we have the Page of Swords, which I cannot show you. It is an image of a naked woman and superimposed onto her is a dragon. It's absolutely beautiful. And the dragon is lighting the throat chakra up with white light. So I guess what I'm saying in this is it's time to reclaim your sexuality on your terms. Your terms, walk your path, not someone else's path, not some organization's path, not social media path. Final messages, please. Okay.
Okay, bear with me. So we have the King, Queen and Knight of Swords. It's higher mind coming in. It's the cleansing of that dirty, stained, sinful, religious, obedient mind. The whole family of swords coming in. This feels like a teaser for the next video. Uh, magician, ace of wands, death. Yeah, four of coins, it's fixed earth, the lovers, three of swords, the heartbreak. It's going to be some letting go, new birth and letting go. What does this speak to? Um, this actually speaks to me. I'm just going to say, it speaks to amorality, okay, amorality, not immorality, no sense of moral. I get solve et coagula with this. this. It's about new fusion points, new ways of making magic using universal force, universal energy, the building blocks. It's very earthy, earthy and Kabbalistic. A glimpse of the Empire State Building there. This is like it's like the hijacking. It's like all the ingredients from the magician's table that have been hijacked in the manipulation of a species are, are here and available. But what is going to guide us? North Node, which is in Aries. You've got to know who you are. You've got to know who you are. Because we can't rebirth. If we tear morality down as we know it, do we replace it with something? All sorts coming in here about what's your core expression. Again, we spoke about this a couple of videos ago. It's really time to make the choice. What is your core expression? What's your deal breaker as a human being? Okay. As a human being, to live the life you came here to live, what's, what are your deal breakers? Where are your boundaries? How do you want to experience life? It's... It's about taking back that two of wands, making the decision, choosing. Deciding on your what's next, walking your path, and not someone else's. And that someone else's might be thousands of years old. Okay, that's beautiful. I am going to go. And I'll have a closing message from Sacred Rebels. That's the answer. That's the answer. If you develop your sensory perception to such an extent that you know what your soul can bear in the making of a new world. And that's it. That's the litmus. What do you feel? Vision of life beyond death. Start picturing it. Imagine. Imagine the cabal torn down. Imagine narcissism 
sadism, masochism, tone down. Imagine it. Put energy into that. Revel in it. Dream it. Dream it with the universe. Because the universe is indifferent. It will help us create what our mind goes to. It is indifferent. <laughs> Perfection of life coming in on that 30, divine creation. I'm going to end it there. That was amazing. Gosh, that was amazing. I thoroughly enjoyed that. So Zeta might be going off in a whole new direction now. I'm just going to go with it. Um, I'm going to send you my love. I'd love to know how you guys are. How are you? Um, if you can only come up with one word, pop it below. Um, that's it. Welcome new subscribers as well. Lovely to have you here. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.